Hey everybody, welcome back to the Delta Down Low podcast. I'm your host, Austin, joined ever as always by Emma, even though you haven't been here in a couple weeks, but I'll say yeah, that for it's everybody. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a bit, but we're happy to have you on. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? Oh man, I've been busy. Uh, mostly, really? mostly busy a lot with uh, with with uh, my retail job. I've been trying to get a lot of hours as I can in between oh, yeah. uh, in between babysitting the nieces and nephews with my mom. It's been a <clears throat> and my partner coming coming over and uh, me and her going on our little ventures ar- around Michigan. It's been a busy. It's been a busy summer so far. So and we got yeah, our oh yeah, we got our forty eight inch pool up now. Uh, excuse oh, me. Wow. Had a sandwich earlier. Um, but that pool is calling my name soon and I can't wait to jump in it. I have never had a pool <clears throat> before, so I wish I had a pool. My grandma's had a pool, but I have not. Ooh, same. Like growing up we never had one. <clears throat> excuse me. Growing up we never had one. Um my uncles always had one, like like one of my like two of my uncles had pools, and they were re- always really really cool. And we always had like you know throughout the years we'd have like little kiddie pools we'd set up, or maybe at least like a medium sized pool that would go up to at least our like our abdomen a little bit. Yeah, like the like the inflatable ones. Yeah, and I I had one of those, so I guess I had one, but I never really counted it as a pool. Yeah, kind of, yeah, I totally get what you mean, and same here, kinda. But now uh, this year, just all like, like a uh, four, five, six months ago, my mom was like, just came in, came into uh, the my living the living room where I watch TV, and she's just like, uh, hey, she's like, hey, I was looking on Amazon and I saw uh, that there was this pool on sale, and I just bought it, and I'm like, oh, all right, all right, guess we got a pool, so we set that up, and so now it's all good to go, and we're ready for the rest of the summer. That's good. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to kind of change things up a little bit today. Usually we get into like... uh some events and news going on around Delta College, but we're going to kind of skip that. We're going to skip our local news. We'll save the local news for later, actually. Uh, We're going to get into world news right now because this is kind of a special topic to talk about. Uh, Because, let's see, this was two days ago now? Uh, On the July 13th in Pennsylvania, former President Donald Trump was making a uh, making a speech at a rally on his presidential campaign and someone did try to take uh make an, made an attempt on his life they tried to uh they tried to gun him down with an AR15 rifle on t- while they were perched on top of a uh while they were uh while they were prone on top of a barn outside the perimeter uh the shooter was taken out by uh secret service snipers but the shooter did injure uh two other individuals and killed a uh, attendee at the rally this i th- this right here is a monumental moment in american history we don't like it's not very often a president has his life so closely uh come to an end a former president or current president uh come to an end by someone else's hand and with the political landscape the country is in right now, I think things have cha- are about to change so much more drastically. I really don't know. Like, if I had an inkling on how the election this fall was going to come out, I that inkling's completely gone. I do not know what uh, who will emerge victorious by November, but I just Ooh. know it's going to be. I just know because uh, because of what happened, <clears throat> what happened uh, on Saturday evening, a lot, uh, the, the like a lot, a lot of the uh, a lot, a lot of securities and ideals that the nation is facing are now being challenged. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I thought, I just think <clears throat> it's absolutely crazy that we're to the point where this is kind of normal in a way not necessarily normal that presidents are being attacked but with all of the shootings happening a lot recently 
I know there's been a couple here in our hometown recently, and that's even crazy to think about, but I think the fact that people are so upset over the election that they're willing to go and try to end someone's life because of it is just absolutely mind blowing to me. You're at, you hit it right on the nail. It's people don't seem to understand the severity of, uh, of politics. They don't, they don't understand that it affects everyone's lives. And, and, and when they don't take that into consideration, they don't take in the fact that these other people, you know, that, they're all human beings as well. Like no matter what side of the spectrum you're on politically, the, at the end of the day, all of us are human. Uh, mm -hmm. No, even down to like the war, like the worst of the worst nitty gritty, worst people in the world are unfortunately still human. And no matter what, like no matter what Donald Trump has said, has done as of right now, you know, we, we can't take, we can't take you know, the consideration and actions of what this man's done into so, like a, an individual can't take something like that into his own hands. And yeah. even then to go out and to attempt to take his life on a national public stage is me ment mentally there had to be, uh, there had, there had to be something going, going on, on with that kid yeah. too. Cause, and again, it's, uh, it was a, just a kid. He's twenty years twenty years old. I got people saying like, uh, "Oh, he was twenty years old. He's not a kid. He he's a young man. He's a, he's a kid." I had no idea he was twenty. Like, yeah, they were interviewing his friends and like, the, the, like the, those are kids. These are all kids, mm -hmm. and you really, we really, really cannot, uh, we really cannot. Uh, what's the word? <clears throat> uh. Well, we really can't can't ignore the fact that any like anyone these days could be could have these dark thoughts behind behind in their head, and go out and call, do a terrible deed and uh, commit some terrible actions, such as like uh, Matt, Thomas Matthew Crooks, who is the shooter behind this incident, a twenty year old a twenty year old man, a young man, a kid. It's I think it's so crazy that mind blowing. I mean, he wasn't even 21 yet, and I don't I don't know how he had the gun or anything like that. But if if you're able to go out and purchase a gun under 21, that's that's still kind of crazy to me too. Like, now I, did, I don't know how we got it. So I did read that the gun was actually his father's, so he did get it from okay. his father. Uh, so I mean, I mean that would be an easier way to get a gun, yeah. But you could still go to any like major retail store like walmart or something and you could buy these guns like i've been in walmart before you know like they have like hunting things there i i think those should not be in retail stores no i i absolutely agree like those i think should be reserved for ammunition ammunition and firearm stores only it's not something i think you should be selling at a national retailer mm -hmm. But it's very easy for people to get access to like the firearms now, and even and when they do get access, you just you don't know what they're gonna do with it. You, it, it's a it's a mystery these days. When you see someone open carrying a firearm, you don't know what they're gonna do. I was at work the other day, and I saw someone come through the self checkout, and they had a big iron on their hip, like comically <laughs> large. But it's like, I don't I don't trust that. I wouldn't want to be near that guy. Like, yeah, all right, he has it holstered and everything. Yeah. Like, some people come into my work, and I work at a fast food job, and it's and it's very small in there. So I understand, but at the same point, if something were to happen in there and they draw their gun, I could be caught in the crossfire because it's such a small building. There's nowhere to really go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because... It's it's not always a it's not always a good guy with a gun or a smart guy with a gun. It could be an idiot with a gun who doesn't know how to properly handle it, who thinks that they're just trying to be hot shit. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like again, you never know who these people are. Like I would not trust anyone with an open carried. I would not want to be around anyone with an open carried firearm. I would I much feel safer with someone concealed carrying because well I don't know they're concealed carrying. Yeah, so. it's, I think it's more of a, like, I 
I get what you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying. Like, you'd rather have it be concealed than just out there. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm That's a very proponent, a uh, big proponent of uh, of uh, you know, if if there's if there's a threat, they shouldn't know of any other threats in the area. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't, I understand if you're going to like somewhere where there could potentially be harm, but. If you're just going out and about your day, then I don't really see a need for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's... And then also, this guy's <clears throat> mental health. I yes. feel like there should be a very big focus on mental health, too. Yes. Oh, absolutely. There had to be... There's got to be something wrong with his mental health that drove him to go... To, just to do all this. Like, the mo FBI is looking at his motivations right now, and... They see uh, that he is a registered... The only thing they're seeing right now is that he's a registered Republican, and despite that, he donated to a uh, to True Blue, a liberal uh, a liberal program back in 2021. So right now, at least to the public eye and to the uh, armchair detectives on the internet, we there's not really a clear motive at this point of this recording. I, it's just so crazy that people do this. That's really, like, my main thing. I still can't get behind why people think it's okay to try to end someone's life via gun. Just those people out there don't genuinely care about... They, they have no compassion or empathy for another human life. And there's, unfortunately, way too many of those people out there. Just some time, just this person just had a gun and snapped. That's still only... only not the only conclusion, but the... Uh, an assumption that we can make right now. Mm -hmm. And the people behind him, the two injured, I think you said, and the one that actually passed away, that's horrible. Like, could you imagine just attending something that you're passionate about and that's the last thing that you do? It's depressing. Like, you, the, no one going there should have, you know, should have anticipated that. You shouldn't have Ooh. to. Same thing with going to a school or going to a movie theater or going to a exactly. mall. You shouldn't be anticipating someone coming in with a rifle because you should just be anticipating a, a leisurely day. But unfortunately, we're at, we're at a point in the nation where firearms are still easily accessible to those who want to get it. And not well, not just regular firearms, automatic firearms. Yep. And I... It's, I think we just abs as a nation need to take a strong stance against it, but right now it's in the crossfire of what is gun control and what isn't. And yeah, that's I, that's just kind of a yeah. topic for in another day because I I don't I I just don't know enough oh, yeah. about gun control. It is it's such a deep topic with so many twists and turns to it. It's crazy, honestly. There are so many good good points and good counterpoints. It's definitely definitely a discussion for I, I would say uh, when the semester starts back up, when we get everybody in the office again. Oh yeah, and and with everybody in there. Mm -hmm. We can do an so editorial do about AR fifteens. Oh, yeah. That would be a good one. But uh, is there anything else that you got to say about the assassination attempt? Um. Well, I guess I have been seeing on TikTok that people are saying or speculating that it was a setup or that um, people are like 100% certain that he's going to win the upcoming election because of this. Um, now, I don't agree with either one of them, to be honest with you. I don't think it was a setup because mm. that's something crazy to set up. I don't even... People are like, how how could you miss him like by that by that much? Some people just wave things in the air, you know, like things happen. Yeah. And then with the like, he's one hundred percent gonna win. I don't think anything is ever one hundred percent certain. No, absolutely. I I don't know if he's gonna win or not, but I I, I do know that like whatever feeling I thought that he wasn't, it's gone now. Like it's the, like the, like I think his chances are higher for sure. Oh, yeah, I definitely think his chances are probably way higher just because of, like, I mean, 
I I hate to admit it, but surviving something like that is impressive. Like that is not something everybody can get to say. I survived a shooting. To be a survivor, I think in itself is impressive, and I think people are going to be like more respectful, respecting of him because of it. If that makes sense. Oh no, you're absolutely right. Uh, he's going to use. Him surviving this, he's going to use everything from that day. Uh, and when I mean everything, uh, put asterisk, put an asterisk next to that, because like, because uh, he he's a surprising man. He he will pull things that I didn't think would be considered everything and still use it. But he will use everything from that day uh, as great promotional material for his campaign. Because that photo of him getting up, pumped on adrenaline, oh, yeah. throwing his fist up in the air with the American flag behind him. That's going to be on so many TV ads. Oh, yeah. And I've seen people say... People have already put it in black and white and said that it's going to be in history books. Oh, I, I Which, would not doubt it. I When yeah, I first that's... saw it, I was... Because I was at the work. I was at work and my boss told me about it. And it was kind of slowing down. So me... I pulled out my uh, my phone and turned on YouTube TV. And my coworker... Me and my coworker were watching it a little bit on ABC. And... Uh, just seeing that image of him pu- pu- punch- pumping his fist up in the air with a flag like that. I looked at that. I'm like, that's a Pulitzer winning photo. That is going to mm-hmm. be seen for years and no one's going to yeah. forget it. It's very impactful photo. It absolutely is. As for conspiracies, though, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not ready for these QAnon conspiracies. Yeah, I... I was just, you know, scrolling on TikTok and it's all that's on my feed right now. I'm like, guys, like, this literally just happened and people are already making jokes about it. It's like, how how you already... It literally just happened. Jesus. It literally just happened, like, 24 hours ago. The internet works and fast. People, people are just making jokes and it's like, wow. The internet works fast and, uh, like, I don't know why they reminded me, but of, like, terrible tragedies, um... There's a video on YouTube, I think it's by, it's either by Paper Will or America September. Both do great videos, um, but what, but I think it was by Paper Will, but he did a video on 9-11 video games, and, like, there were people uploading their own quote-unquote video games of 9-11, like, hours after it happened onto, onto the internet. Yeah, that's so that's they work. Crazy. They work. Qu- the internet works quick. There are dedicated people out there who have nothing better to do. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't doubt it. I mean, like you said, nothing better to do. So and to make up weird shit on the internet, including conspiracy theories. Yep. <laughs> Let's move on to some local news. Um, I don't have much for local news. I want to bring up this tidbit uh, and kind of go on a little rant. Uh, local news is very, very important, uh, especially on the internet when uh, when we're in kind of an age where people are saying they're not getting uh, newspapers as much as they used to. Uh, they turn to the internet. Places, at least locally for us, it'd be like M Live, WNEM, ABC Twelve, like what, like. And check all their websites and news cha- news uh, news channels and all that stuff. Uh, M Live has an article uh, wrote, written by Cole Waterman, and Cole Waterman does so many articles for M Live. Uh, but this one, uh, I just want to talk about real quick. Exusville teacher accused of inappropriate relationship with a student will not be charged. Reading more into this article. It, uh, it only states, Exusville, Michigan prosecutor have declined to charge a former Exusville teacher alleged to have an inappropriate relationship with a student. Exusville officials confirmed July 11th, Babe County prosecutor Nancy E. I'm sorry, Bershushko has relayed to, to them her decision to not issue criminal charges. As such, they are able to grant a Freedom of Inf- Information Act request seeking reports of police investigation into the matter. And then that's kind of it. Not for the article, but it's kind of cut off because it's an exclusive story to for for M Live subscribers. So if you want, if you a local Bay City citizen is concerned about sending your child to uh, an, a particular Exusville school, 
then you better sign up for M Live uh, for an M Live subscription service. And maybe you'll get, get their seven day free pass, and then they'll charge it right after. And you can find out exactly all the more details they have about this article and this school. Looking at this article right now, the only thing I could tell you is that the photo is of Garber High School, so I can only assume this 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 uh inappropriate relationship situations happening at Garber High School. But aside from that, there's no other information. I I don't know if it's because of the information that's just available at the time, but as a local as a local reader who would like to get their news I feel like this should not be locked behind a paywall because this is regarding, yeah, this is regarding a high school and students and children. Like if I was a parent, I would like to know a little bit more information, even if it was scarce. I feel like with certain topics, it should be available to the public. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Cause uh, M life, like I said, they have a subscription service where you can get, certain art where you can look at some of their certain articles and there's they have a lot of articles that are behind a paywall and it's a lot of it's either uh stuff like sports or politics but this is a pretty i feel like this is a pretty important local uh local article that should be more readily available to to readers in the area have you ever encountered, like, have you ever seen, like, a lot of those, like, you go look an article up online and it's behind a paywall and there's no way around it? Oh, yeah, I'll be, like, on Facebook, just, you know, scrolling and I see something interesting and I'll go to click on it and then I can't read it because it's got 15 million ads and then when I scroll down, there essentially is no article because it got to pay. And were those, like, a international newspaper or were they, like, locally? It makes both, makes both. Yeah, so I, I I feel like, yeah, I just feel like it's unethical uh, a good chunk of the time. But that that's a big word for me, unethical. Uh, call, <laughs> calling it, it, it's, it ain't it ain't that big. It's newspaper articles. I should it ain't to be calling it unethical, but it should, should be, be like available. The devil's advocate here, I guess. Um, you know they they do got to make a profit from it to keep themselves in business so i can understand why they're charging people so that way you know revenue and stuff so they don't go out of business but in the same aspect if it's important enough it should be public nope absolutely right it should be more readily more readily public information like that should be available cuz that, like a broken record. If I was a parent, I would like to know a, lot, a little bit more information from this article, especially since no other uh, local news station has this information yet. And Cole Waterman is a fantastic writer. He gets so many stories, but so many of them with so many of them that I think might be a little too important to the community are locked behind a paywall. And I absolutely understand that they do need to make a buck, but some of them I don't think should be locked mm-hmm. behind that subscription service. <clears throat> all right, is there anything in the local news that you have to share at all today? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, the um, Pride, Bay City Pride has been rescheduled, I believe, in August now. Oh, that's right, that's right. I think I did hear something about that. Have you uh, ever attended it before? I have never attended Pride before, and I wanted to this year, but it was canceled. So hopefully next month I'll be going. I really wanted to take some pictures, but we'll see because I don't remember what days it is. But uh, hoping it'll be nice out. That's all right, because I got you with the days right here. The Great Lakes Bay Pride okay. Festival will return with its new day on August 17th. And it will go at Winona Park from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Bay City. And I think uh, I think that kind of wraps up everything that we have to talk about today. Uh, what about you, Emma? You got anything else you'd like to share today? No, I think I'm all good. I think covers about everything. Yeah. All right. Well. As always, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, This has been the Delta Down Low. As always, I'm Austin here with Emma. 
and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening. <laughs>